Hello and welcome to Aetherite Radio, Gamer Escapes Final Fantasy XIV podcast. I am, I always want to say Fusion X, I'm not, I'm Zanidra. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes, you know, Cadence, yeah. I'm Fusion X. Anyway, I'm Zanidra for Actuallys and I am joined by Aldino and our guest, Bill Murray. Hello. Hello. Hi, everybody. I don't know where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't look? No, you looked. Um, I did, but I don't remember. <laughs> In, in true Fusion S- X, wow, Fusion letter style, I'm at the top of the pyramid. So oh, you I guys see. are, you guys mm. are my feats. Okay, I see how it is. <laughs> we are uh, support classes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the support class. <laughs> uh, I'm the, I'm not going to talk about Summoner. This is where he sighs and, <laughs> and it's sad. Uh, we, had a, we had a rant fest the other night doing a raid. I don't normally rant during raid, but my fingers just did not want to work on dancer. <laughs> and as with with many classes, if you mess up your timing, it's just like, well, what what is DPS? How do I? I don't know. <laughs> can I just jump off now? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, can we restart? I know the rest of you just use a pot, but that was really bad. So we're not going to win at the end. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, today uh, we have some news and and a topic. We do that here. Uh, the topic <laughs> is our, uh, well, not our PAX interview. That was last time. But the PAX panel with the people that we interviewed last time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the news involves some stuff very near and dear to my heart. Uh, <laughs> the first topic is furnishing contest. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. So the, uh, the design contest is back. I guess they used up all of their material from before. Or at least all the stuff that they liked. <laughs> that they wanted to. <laughs> well, if you notice, there were winners, but there were also things that they just put in, right? Yeah. Like, oh, well, that's a pretty good idea. Let's use that. I don't know. Um, I'm a hobo. I don't have a house or an apartment or anything. So. <laughs> we have your girlfriend's house and you have an FC house. Have you been that's in the true. FC house recently? You're like, no. no. <laughs> Not since Shadow Rear. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really redesign it, but I... Uh, I changed some some color palettes around, and I'm mm. like, "Oh, this looks so very nice." And I use the new the new archways. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough about my craziness. Uh, <laughs> who, uh, the the entry period starts Thursday, September fifth. So it started Today's already. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it ends on Monday, October seventh. So you have a fair amount of time uh, at this point. When we are speaking exactly a month at mm-hmm. at 7 59 a.m pacific time uh mm-hmm. if you if you have anything that you want to see add it please add it holy crap <laughs> this is such a good opportunity because they really looked at that stuff that people entered and we had mm-hmm. some good stuff out of it some mm-hmm. very nice stuff if you win you get uh the modern aesthetic strife item which translates to you get clouds hair that's the only prize but that's not really it that's not the only prize the real prize is better furniture. Yeah. Yes. It helps us all. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, if you are interested in that and uh, want more information on how to enter and all that good jazz, uh, go to Lodestone. It's right up there. Very big mm-hmm. and obvious. Mm-hmm. Uh, and please submit to that because uh, the more people that are entering items into it, it shows the uh, show Square Enix that we're interested in housing and housing is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and they continue to put a lot of time and effort into that. So uh, I encourage people to do that, even if they don't feel like they're artists or anything. Yeah. You, you know, can take you pictures, can in fact. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, maybe, maybe work on it a little bit if you take a picture. Maybe doodle on top of it or something. But <laughs> it says right in the rules. You can use images. You can actually mm. uh, take pictures of, of stuff you draw, too. So if you're better mm. at drawing on paper, draw on paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next item, the next item on the docket is Tokyo Game Show. Uh, SE is heading out to the Tokyo Game Show. That's not just uh, FF14, that is SE, so all Square Enix stiff. Uh, Thursday, September 12th through Sunday, September 15th in Makuhari Meisei Chiba, Japan. So likely none of our listeners will be going. Maybe a couple, handful of you guys. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's some there's some cool stuff going on there. They're doing a yes. trial roulette. This sounds crazy to me. Wherein uh, you have to switch places with your party members, like mid fight. I don't know how they're gonna do that. If they're just like, here's a pause button. All right, white mage, you're the huh. tank now. 
<laughs> maybe you just go change places and you just jump up and sit down <laughs> yeah that sounds awful <laughs> unless unless you're one of those people who plays everything play everything well yeah are, i i definitely play we? everything but well ugh, no <laughs> what were you gonna only say DPS. like i'm only dps what about you bill you play everything uh i'm a fisher main so <laughs> <laughs> no but i so I, you're I play a caster that Wait, yeah, caster, there you go. <laughs> I don't regret that joke at all. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's an Eden's Gate roulette with a t-shirt as a prize. So if you uh, happen to be in the area. <laughs> um, I wonder if that says, you know, I beat Eden or something and has Eden on it. Because I would love that one. Right? That would be really cool. That's a little bit of a crossover shirt there. Yeah, really. <laughs> but then it makes you want the, like, Kafka one and the X-Death one. Oh, that Where were cool. those? <laughs> what if it was an I beat Leviathan, except they cut off the sleeves because the crown went away? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. It's a I beat Leviathan tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh. That's some oh. originality. Oh, um, they're they're doing a, a kind of interesting <laughs> thing. I already said the oh. other thing was interesting, but this is, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to have a booth set up for character creation for people who've never played the game before. And if you go and you create your character, they will give you that character data and presumably the way to put it in the right place on your computer on a mm -hmm. special uh, USB. And they didn't say what the That's special cool. USB is, but I figure it's probably one of those uh, Shadowbringers tome, ones. tome stones. Oh, okay, yeah. Did, were uh, there Shadowbringers ones? Did you get a Shadowbringers yes. one? There Show was. us. I was like, I'm gonna uh, look for my other one. Here yeah, it is. So this was uh, Media Tour, so. This is what they gave at the media. Oh, that's so this neat! How cute! USB. So it's probably so that one. On that thing. Yeah. yeah, that's that's much more current. Very I cool. can't get this box open. I'm lame yeah. and still have this thing in a box <laughs> instead of using it. Actually, yeah. all of our media tour stuff is on this flash drive right now. Stuff. So. Like I took it off of there, but I I didn't delete it. So it's just been on here. I even have fingernails, and this is just like, nah, screw you. You don't <laughs> use me. I'm not coming out of the box. Yeah, I hope it's that Shadowbringers one, because it's really cool to have the Dark Knight sword, you know? Yeah. I hope they start selling that thing, too. I want to get this out of here. <laughs> so uh, if somebody else wants to read the next part. Sure. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, hand in hand with that, they're going to give away starter editions of Final Fantasy XIV, which is really cool, because most of these events, like, a lot of people will just go, oh, it's cool, it's shiny, what is this? It's a Final Fantasy, I've never seen it. It's, what what's an MMO like? They don't they don't really know what it is. So it's cool that they're going to give away starter editions, so that people can go home and try it out. Um, yeah, there's the tombstone. <laughs> ah, ooh. ooh, very cool. It'd be much cooler, <laughs> but they as a new person you wouldn't understand what the heck it is, and they probably That's don't have any more. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <gasps> uh, so That's next. Weird. Uh, <laughs> Friday, which was yesterday, all day long. Yeah, all day long. Uh, Yoshi P was wandering random servers. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit past that now. But yep. uh, <laughs> you could have seen them. Now you can watch the clips and uh, you know see the video on demand. Did anyone watch that? Did you watch that, Bill? Uh, no. Yeah, not I, that late. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I haven't really. You're seen like, I'm it. not that interested in what Yoshi is doing. <laughs> That's like 3 a.m. Yeah. Oh, Eastern right. Eastern time. That's so. That's true. There's, there's so, probably stuff on Reddit. It's usually like 200 people trying to get a screenshot, and you yeah, can't even exactly. like see. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and then as soon as he says something, everyone's like, "Take it! What did he say? Let's figure it out." Yeah. <laughs> it's a puzzle. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I'm super interested in is uh, is that. Tonight? Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Tonight. 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. PDT. Uh, the next letter from the producer live, which will be part one of patch 5.1. So they'll have Yosuke Sato and Yoko Taro uh, there hanging Wait, out. No, with no, no, no. That's next That's week. Not... Oh, next Saturday. Okay. <laughs> That's next Saturday. All this stuff is, is next Saturday. I'm like, September 14th. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. No, no. The thing yeah. that started already was the uh, furnishing contest. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's games, next Saturday, September 14th. Week. Yeah, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. PDT, which is 
it's still a little late for the East Coast, but it's better than like 4 a.m. I'll be <laughs> awake. Usually get, yeah. I'll be um, reading. So Yosuke Sato and, and uh, Yokitaro will be there. They'll be talking about Yarha Doc Apocalypse, which is super exciting. Uh, I don't even care. Just tell me about Summoner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so you can view it live on uh, 14's Twitch channel, Alienware TV's Twitch, which is yeah. cool because I guess they're partnered with it, and YouTube. So check it out if you want to see it. It's like uh, a, it's an interesting throwback. Uh, here they have like two sponsors, one of which is apparently Alienware, and in Japan they mm -hmm. have like 20 when you go to a fan fest. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot more sponsors over there. So I guess um, they're sl they're slowly gaining more and more sponsors, which is cool to see. I yeah. mean, it's cool to see the game get the pop that it's getting recently. Um, People are like, "Oh, this game is successful." All right, <laughs> maybe cool. I'll check it out. Yeah. Uh, so lastly, in the news, we have uh, Tales from the Shadows. Uh, so we talked about this last week. There are those little stories about NPCs in the world that come out every once in a while uh, near the rising. So the second one is out via the Lodestone, and uh, it's all about Stinian <laughs> and his journey, uh, which I can't wait to read, actually. Like, I didn't actually know it until I read it just now, so I'm going to go read that some point today. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, but these are these are really good. Oh, and, yeah? And they're, they're, they're canon as far as lore is concerned, mm -hmm. so yeah. um, they fill in a lot of things that if they had just kind of thrown in the MSQ, it would have been kind of off topic, forgettable but, yeah um well not forgettable it just would have kind of deterred the msq from what they mm. were talking about but um these are good so if you're a big lore yeah. fan do not miss these yeah i don't want to say awesome. anything about it i definitely also read yeah. it and i want to be like and it's like no i don't know i don't want to spoil it <laughs> yeah it made me laugh the... i'll say that <laughs> <laughs> well that's good uh cool. so i guess next we'll just go right into the panel yep I'm gonna move this window over here so that I'm not like this the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my second monitor. Uh, suddenly my face is brighter. Yeah. So, I, go ahead. this panel uh, was at PAX West. Uh, it was the day after our interview. Uh, actually, two days after our interview. It was just the last Sunday. Um, and it was with Takeo Suzuki, who is the our team lead, and uh, Ishikawa san, who I think. We all know of her. I think like most of the community knows her as the Dark Knight Lady. I mean, because those quests yeah. are just so amazing. You know, like it's just great to have both of them. Uh, and so they wanted to talk about the narrative and visual design of, of Shadowbringers, which was just so awesome that we get to see it. Because it's like all of this stuff, you know, that happens behind the scenes just disappears. You know, all the stories about the development we never get to hear. So um, they started with introductions uh so suzuki-san uh has been do. a member of the dev yeah has been a member of the dev team since like 2006 he said uh which is 1.0 and dragon quest 10 time for square enix um but the thing that was most uh surprising to me was he worked back in chrono cross days as an animator for square enix which was like oh man like chrono cross is an amazing game so he's been there for a while uh he Boy, actually I joked was about a teenager yeah yeah, uh, he joked about working on 1.0, calling it hard times, <laughs> and everyone, you know, he got a, a big laugh about that. And then he said, "It's kind of like Ardbur's journey on the first, uh, which I didn't." Such admit. an appropriate parallel, right? Oh <laughs> right, gosh. exactly. We did everything right and got punched in the face. Oh yeah. man! Uh, and then, of course, as soon as they switched over to Ishikawa san the audience erupted like this thunderous applause, like. We know who she is. She's amazing. She did this. And she was kind of taken aback. That's going to feel uh, really good. Emotional. Oh, man. Yeah. You know. Uh, and of so course, Ishikawa-san uh, has done some of the story before. She did Binding Coil. She did Omega. She did, of course, the Dark Knight quest. But on this, on Shadowbringers, she was the entire main story quest. All of it. So that that was all, I mean, you know, designed by her. Um, and she also so if you did, liked uh, that at all like i don't know i don't know i've I mean, heard some people thought it was all right eh, it's okay i guess <laughs> <laughs> you know what i think though I, I hope that that yoshi p and square enix were kind of looking at the reaction from the crowd to that because yeah. um you know in if you're familiar back in 
uh, Stormblood, they had mm-hmm. two people writing the MSQ, yeah. and she mm-hmm. was one of them. I think she did the Doman side. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now they kind of said, okay, you've earned your place. We're going to let you do the entire story. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's been very, very well um, you know, appreciated and received mm-hmm. and even by the community. And so hopefully they say, oh, they, our community likes this. Let's give her another chance. Because like, you know what? If she can keep up this caliber of work, <sighs> Like put her to work. Let's let's. Yeah. let's I want to see more of what she can do. Put like, that hamster on. on the wheel, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So please, if we're, uh, we're... <laughs> I mean, because I love binding coil too. Like, mm-hmm. you know, low key that. Uh, I mean, you know, Eden is still being developed, but like that's the best raid storyline. Like, period. Like, it's so good. It, it ties into the main story quest. So it, it's cool to see you know her be elevated to this position, and uh, yeah, she definitely deserves it. So after that, they started out uh, talking about how and when they started Shadowbringers. So this started back in the summer of 2017, basically right after Stormblood. Uh, and they had some adorable slides. Like uh, when we have the write up on the site, hopefully we'll have a whole bunch of those slides because they were just adorable. Like a uh, little scribble style of all the. Uh, the team members like they they spotlighted two other uh of the art team and said what they did but at the start of this uh they said okay yoshi p just kind of walked up to us <laughs> and said all right here are the things that i want for the next expansion so he said one let's go to the first we have to go there okay two we need trusts <laughs> like i want the trust system and i want to be able to bring the scions into the dungeons right cool and the last one, you know, they're like, okay, we got this, cool, what, okay, we're going to make this happen. The last one was, hey, the opening movie needs to be done in a month. So if you could just get to that right now. <laughs> Thanks, Yoshi P. <laughs> I love hearing the stories about him as the producer. That's insane. Uh, if yeah, you think about time, it, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, that's... That's a lot I, of I, work. Yeah, immediately. Across um, but, a you know, bunch of people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's, amazing to me every time they talk about him and how he just goes, yeah, just do this. <laughs> and they're like, cool, we got it. <laughs> I imagine they're used to that by now. But, right. you know, they, they mentioned how basically they had been working on it, you mm-hmm. know, two years before it was going to be released. Yeah. So if you think about it, they've, they've mentioned this before, that they're on a pretty strict schedule. Mm-hmm. So that means that they're probably already working on 6.0 right now yes. because it's towards oh, yeah. the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. Okay. So guess what? Someone's working on a story. Someone's working on a, you know, the the, the, music, the, the opening yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, and and I think what's what's interesting is that um, it tells us that you know what they're they're not just rushing things. They're not just throwing it together at the last minute. They're taking mm-hmm. a lot of time so that it can look good, so that it can be well polished. Um, and that's exciting for me as a player. I don't know about all of you. Yeah. Yes. It's so cool to. I mean to see that it's just continual development. I mean, that's that's how an MMO has to be, but they have they really have the process down now, I feel. Because yeah, you're right. They're probably doing it right now because it was successful, you know, like they can't start any later and do everything that they did for us in Shadowbringers. So it's yeah, it's really heartening to hear like, oh man, you know, like they're already working on it and they're incorporating some of the stuff that we reacted to already too, which is great. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to me that they do it all in two years. Like hearing that they yeah. made that opening movie in a month. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like not even, not even just <laughs> having some sort of cohesive story to it. Like mm-hmm. the graphics. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. It's just, they, they have know. to have that stuff like ready, like click button, everything perfect background or something. Right. <laughs> That's oh, crazy. We'll get into it later. <laughs> they, talk, <laughs> they go into the process. So, um, so they were excited. Because they were like, okay, trust system is great, but it might make it feel like a single player RPG, um, you know, because you're kind of adventuring together. I actually went through the whole MSQ just with trust. I didn't do any uh, duty finding at all, um, just because I just wanted to see it. Um, uh, and so they felt that they needed a story that wasn't limited by being in an MMO, but made better because it's in an MMO. And the next part of the panel was talking about how they decided to do that. So the first thing that they identified was that they have, you know, it's an MMO. So you have the history and resources of the previous expansions all the way back to 1.0. So if they could just use that 
they could tell a richer story out of building it out of the past. And I think we see that. Like, all of us as players are like, look at that thing. That's part of the what makes it so amazing is you see all that stuff from the past and they're tying it together very artfully. And you're just like, What's your, like, favorite little callback if you have one? Like, if there's if there's just some little thing that sticks in your mind, either one of you, what do you think? I don't know if it's a if it's a little thing, but it's, oh, it yeah. seems like in this expansion they have put a lot more emphasis in building out the characters of the science individually, mm. and not just their own little characteristics, but how they interact with each right. other. I mean, just mm. even seeing in the MSQ, you know, how Yishtola talks to Thinkrid. Okay, how Thinkrid deals with Nymphilia. You know, yeah. how the two twins are talking to each other. I mean, those. <laughs> backstories have been building for years and years yes. now and uh, even when you're doing the trust and uh, it's funny you were saying you were you did the entire story you probably just finished mm-hmm. the msq last night because that's, <laughs> that's those yeah. trust dungeons they take forever oh my gosh <laughs> but uh but th- there's a lot of interaction i'll i'll do sometimes i've done the dungeons with trust and i'll just turn off the ost turn off the, the background yeah. music and i'll just hear them kind of talk to each other and i'm like this is really cool like it's not something they just kind of threw in on the side, they put a lot of detail into this. And I just think it adds to an already successful expansion. Yeah, I think they knocked it out of the park with that benefit. And I, you know, they identified it early and they really focused on putting that in, which is great. So the next thing uh, that they said was great because it's an MMO was that us, we, they, they have us, they have the community who is doing this sort of thing, like looking at the nuances that they put in and getting excited and talking about it. So they said that they wanted to... The fact that we're add, interested into it. Yeah, yeah, they wanted to add dialogue that can be interpreted in different ways, and you know, to have us debate the nuances um, of it. And they had a really funny example, which was the shoe bill. So I didn't know this, because I, I only saw the shoe bill once. <laughs> I only paid attention to it once. That thing's a uh, creeper. Yeah, it's very much a creeper. And Ishikawa <laughs> actually mentioned that she wanted it in there as many times as she could get. So apparently it appeared five different in five different quests, but a total of six different appearances. So it appeared in one quest twice. So how many did you see? Probably three. <laughs> Saw one. Yeah. Three or four. I think, I think the sixth appearance is the fact that you get it as a minion. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's probably right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad because like I'm doing the MSQ now like on a second alt. Yeah. So like the third time going through and I'm like, man, I can only think of three times and I know I've really been paying attention. <laughs> right. So um, at least two I'm of sure them, somewhere on the lore forums are all there. Yeah. yeah. At least two of them there were in the like look around shooty game type deals, right? Oh yeah, yeah that's you right. You scroll across and there's this bird looking at you all like mm, and you're like I love that game, all right. yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't pay attention to it. I think I was too busy shooting the crystal I, I shark. I have that I have a terrible maybe not even terrible, but I have a habit. Of if there is a big background that they're showing me, I want to look at all the corners and see if they included <laughs> anything. So yeah. that's when you find little stuff like uh, yeah. the snowman in the background of Shiva's arena. Oh yeah, like, I forgot about that showman, uh, snowman. <laughs> uh, but the last benefit that they said uh, was that everyone loves their own character. Like in an MMO, you just have this this feeling of connection that you can't really get in the single player uh, game. So because of that ad- attachment, they wanted to make our character shine. Uh, they wanted to make scenes that people would be dying to screenshot. Um, and because of that, they ended up adding a lot more animations and movements to the characters just to to spotlight that we were interacting with people. They said that they added <laughs> 1.3 times the normal amount of movements in Shadowbringers and then the previous expansions. And it's like, that's, I mean, it's you know, that's a lot more. <laughs> I mean, that doesn't seem... Like but it's you, not you can double. tell. Yeah, you can really tell how expressive all the characters well, are. Let me let me phrase that differently. You can't mm-hmm. tell, and mm-hmm. that's good. I feel mm-hmm. like in for me personally, in previous expansions, it was kind of like, ah, they used that emote again. Ah, uh, uh, ah, I look like a right. robot. Ah, yeah. why is this character going like this? That's not that situation, you know? Yeah. Whereas in this one, it was very smooth, and you kind of didn't notice it because it was so smooth, I feel. Right. They added yeah. some more custom ones, you know. I think you can kind of see even a development of your own character from the MSQ, like starting off when you're level one. Because when you're level one, you know, you're just kind of just this adventurer and then you're just part of a group. And slowly as the story moves, you become kind of the forefront of it. 
And so, mm -hmm. so it makes a lot more sense that they're going to um, put you in the spotlight and make sure that you're paying attention to those things. And I think that they're noticing that, hey, a lot of people are taking pictures. A lot of people do G pose. A lot of people love their glamour yeah. um, and people <laughs> are interested in that. And so they're saying, okay, if the community is interested in it, let's put in an extra 30% of effort onto yeah. these particular cutscenes. And I'm like, cool, that's great. You know, <laughs> yeah. they're listening to us. That's good. Yeah. And you know, they mentioned that it, it's a, uh, it's not easy to do to add, to add more animations just because of, you know, they only have so much time in the two years that they have. So, yeah. I mean, th that's a lot of development, but they really wanted to do it and they got it done. So thank you. Really. It's, it's thank great. You. I think we all see it. <laughs> Um, so after I thought that, of, said, I'm going to interrupt you mm -hmm. really quick. I thought yeah, of, right. uh, my favorite tiny thing, uh, from the last, Oh yeah. uh, when you're talking to Artbert and, uh, he mentions having to help prepare for a feast oh, and you're like, God. dude, me too. What the heck? <laughs> Why does everyone want me to do these things? <laughs> yes. I really like that. I think it's just become a meme now. That, yeah, yeah, it is. And they're aware course. of it. And I love that. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> It's such a, I mean, and that's not even like a, it, it's a story callback, but it's not. It's a meta slash, mm -hmm. you know, like meme callback to the players and the community specifically. Yeah. Uh, cause, <laughs> which is great. I love that they're doing this sort of thing. And yeah, you couldn't couldn't really do it in the single player standalone game. They're right. That's, that's the power of an MMO. And they're talking about, next they talked about harnessing that power. So Ishikawa said that she, <laughs> she asked herself, uh, what have we always wanted to do in a Final Fantasy MMO, right? So that's how they kind of approached Shadowbringers. They wanted, she wanted to think about the things that she wanted to see. Um, she mentioned that she's played Final Fantasy since, you know, Super Nintendo era, like like a lot of us who are playing, yeah. <laughs> a lot of us who are playing right now. Um, and, you know, those stories are more contained than an MMO. Uh, but this time, you know, since we're on the first, most of it's destroyed. Most, you know, there's a, it's a lot more intimate setting. There's a lot less room to have to explain everything outside of it. So she felt that that gave her a good place to set the story, um, which, I mean, that makes sense to me when you think about it, like they had to make the entire first, would we even have had the expansion right now? <laughs> That's kind of insane. <sighs> that would be so, so much. What you're saying is we probably won't be going to any other worlds. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, maybe they could. You know, uh, there it's... was a there was an interview that just got published uh, today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where Yoshi P some, said something like maybe an 8.0, which um, so, I mean, he made a comment on it. So people yeah. are still asking about that kind of stuff, because eventually we're going to get all the areas, mm -hmm. you know, on the source. And, uh, you know, people are having a lot of good uh, interaction with going to the first. So, yeah, who knows? Maybe. But, it's it's They'll cool figure to think out a about. solution. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cool to think about. But it's, so, it's not mm -hmm. unprecedented either. I mean, no, it's done not. it, and uh, Eleven did it. Yeah, it happens. We've been to the just... void. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. A it very limited happens. area of it, true, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the 13th. Let's do it. Uh, so she mentioned next that her first draft of the Shadowbringers main story quest had a lot of elements that we see now. So it had the Asians, it had Ardbert, it had the Crystal Exarts narrative, it had the Scions plot lines, but left out was Vothri completely. Like he wasn't leading any Sin Eaters, he wasn't there, he wasn't, you know, like half Sin Eater <clears throat> because the Sin Eaters were originally being controlled by Eden. So Eden was the final boss of the expansion. Like that was it. You just kind of go around and then fight Eden. Let me tell you this, I'm actually super excited about this hearing this because yeah. that means that the the heightened story and the storytelling that Ishikawa was going to do with Eden is still left to be told right mm -hmm. in the Eden raid. Yes. Okay. And that heightens up that that particular story. I think a lot of people, I mean, you had kind of already mentioned this. You're like, oh, binding coil, that yes. was the best raid story. Well, mm -hmm. everyone's gonna say that until another raid story comes right. along and blows it out of the water. And you know what? We've got the right person writing it, we've got the right mm -hmm. story. And it looks like, okay, Eden is going to have a really, really cool ending because they've been planning it for two years now. Yeah. It's it's one of those things to see the inside, you know, into the development process of, yeah, this was the first draft. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, what made them change it? Well, it was Yoshi P. <laughs> <laughs> Yoshi P said, you know what? It would be cool if the world was filled with light, right? But you return darkness to each area as you defeat a boss there. 
Uh, and we're going to do it in the real game, too. We're going to make it permanently daytime. And, you know, during the panel, they're like, yeah, he said that. And we thought about it. And we're like, ah, OK, all right, let's let's do it. Let's let's make it happen. <laughs> and they were like, then we just had to figure it out. You know, like at that point, they liked the idea and they just went for it. And, you know, it's it's cool to see the the drafts and, you know, kind of the evolution of all these ideas. Um, I I think it's better. I I don't know. I don't I know think the how the story's way better with Bothry in it. I mean, he is yeah. like a really well cast character. Right. Every time I, I listen to his voice actor, I'm it's like, wow, they weirdo. cast like the perfect person for this. I mean, he's just yeah. a great villain, and yeah, uh, his, he's... his 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 lines, his voice lines, <laughs> and all the dungeons are they're so meme, you know. <laughs> yeah, I it's am true. righteousness. <laughs> yeah, the way he delivers it too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so next they went into designing the new areas that we would go through and bring back the night too uh so this is where suzuki san kind of joined in as you know the art team lead uh earlier on he said that he was in charge of everything 3d basically everything that was a 3d asset kind of went through him for final approving he, he had a, a a hand in it so when they started to talk about this they said well we don't have time to cover all of the new areas but we'll pick one and you know I'm sure everyone watching or there was like, please be, please be Amarat, please be the Tempest. And you know, the, the slide comes up and it says Tempest. And like, you could just hear a little bit of cheering. I mean, we already knew. They basically right, told us in, in <laughs> yeah, our in interview. interview. Yeah, in our interview. Fusion had uh, a million questions about Amarat and they were like, we can't really answer those. We have a panel, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and as soon as they started to talk about it, they played the Amarat City version of Full Fathom 5, you know, that that plays there. They played it over the PA system in there. Huh. And they, said they really wanted it to, to be playing during it um, just because they wanted to talk about development of that song too, which is great. Um, so Ishigawa said that final battles on the source were huge, you know, usually armies against armies. And, you know, like you go in as, you know, the the spearhead of a group and you, you kill a thing and we yay, we win but she really wanted to end the story in an isolated place with just you and you know, like your few companions that, that can be there. And it's just you and the enemy. And I, man, that, I didn't even think about that until I heard that. And yeah, that made it so much more impactful, I think. Uh, what do you guys think? Yeah? Uh, yeah, that would that'd be the word I would have <laughs> used as well. Oh, it's quite impactful. Oh, Especially like, I mean, they, they talk about it. it from here on out, but it's 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 dark, it's it's quiet, mm -hmm. there it's 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 almost dreary. Yeah, yeah. And if you, if you think about how they've um, created and set up the anticipation of the final zone, you yeah. know, from Rome are born mm -hmm. to Heaven's Word to Stormblood. I mean, you've got like okay, I'm going through the Praetorium, or yeah. I'm yeah. going through um, as this law. And yeah. then, uh, okay, I'm going to uh, to Alamigo, and you know, mm -hmm. they've got their kind of that, that daytime yeah. uh, Alamigo music and stuff like that. Uh, and so this one is just, it was like different. It was, but it was yeah. different in a good way because it unsettled our expectations. Right. But you know what? I'm cool with that because yeah. I don't like it when it's, you know, we can just predict Formula. everything how it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that. It's nice. Change is good, I think. Change is, yeah. It, and it, it was such a good idea to Not have. Not even that, exactly that change, but variety. Yeah. Yeah. The spice of life. <laughs> exactly. So once she had that idea that she wanted it to be kind of isolated, uh, they began to brainstorm the ideas. So most of these were listed on the slide during the presentation and, you know, the image will be on the website, but I did go through them one by one. So the first thing that they said was they had the idea to put the area on the seafloor um, with a whole bunch of ancient ruins. Um, so, you know, that first part with the Ondo um, and, you know, their, well, their city and then all the ruins and kind of that desolate, you know, seafloor look. Um, deeper in, they wanted to add the modern cityscape, but they specifically said that they wanted to make it out of stone um, just so that it wouldn't be concrete and, you know, look, I don't know, out of character, um, which was really interesting to me. Uh, and then they started to talk about the music. So she said that she wanted to be, she wanted the music to be soft and beautiful and kind of poignant, you know, kind of stay with you. 
Um, so they went to Sokin. <laughs> who, hey, music I mean, guy. he's got such variety, you know, like he can make Titan, <laughs> but he can also make Amara, like, and that, 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 you know, just like uh, Uematsu before him, it's just amazing the range of music that we get in 14. You know, what's interesting is that, mm -hmm. uh, is that she said that she was the one that went to Sokin. Yes. Um, and it was interesting that uh, she felt that she had the influence to go to Sokin and to say, hey, this is the story that I'm making. This is what the, the area is going to look like. And mm -hmm. she wanted to put the input in, into Sokin, into the creative design of the song. Right. And I like that. It's not that Sokin is just like, oh, let me just make a bunch of random songs. I'm just going to fit them. Like the writers feel that they have the influence uh, and the rapport where they can actually right. go to Sokin and do that. I thought that was really good. It's, it's nice because they're, they all want to work together in a way that's going to have a really nice product. So, right. It's and, a cool thing. and you can really feel it because it just matches so well. Like it just, I, I don't know. The first time I walked in there and the music started playing, I was like, Oh man, this is it. You know, like <laughs> this is the end. There's nowhere else to go. Um, so part of that process of creating the song, um, so, you know, she said, this is what I want. This is what I w want it to be like. And in kind of workshopping it with Sokin, Sokin suggested using the sound of the clock ticking in the background as a kind of precursor to the calamity. The so like during days. the song, yeah, it's just kind of constantly ticking. Um, the next thing that they said was interesting to me because I think we all noticed it. There was a little bit in Rock Tika, but the end of the song, it ends and then there's nothing and then it restarts. And so that was on purpose for this song in particular, because uh, she, uh, Ishikawa-san said that she really enjoyed like the, the gravity that it, that it added. It, it just added something to the song to stop completely and then restart. Sokin was actually against it at first, but she convinced him. <laughs> so Not yeah, to mention, that back and forth. Uh, back uh, and forth. Yeah. Emmett Selk is running through what, what is basically uh, a simulation mm -hmm. and it'll go over and over again right like it, the song it, so there's like yeah. a reset for the simulation for the song it's just some of those i mean it's, it's a tiny little detail but like when you think about it, it's like man you know they really spent the time in thinking about how to present this to us and you know it they knocked it out of the park with that um <laughs> so yeah so it was kind of this back and forth between she and Sokin to get to this song, which honestly is probably my favorite song in the game now. I I, I, I can't pick another one. What about you guys? Okay. What did you I say? Mean, yeah. <laughs> I said hum it for us. Oh. <laughs> no, no, this is not the musical show. We'll have a musical show. We, we promised people that we would do a musical show and Fusion's not on it. So yeah. uh, yeah, like, right. The, Someone in, in the chat says Lahi, and I'm like, right. I want to say Lahi. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my favorite meme song. Uh, I, well, I mean, I, I like that song. Name. My children's yeah. name Lahi. <laughs> Adorable. Holy crap. I like that song, and I like that song beyond the meme. Like, I just, I like it. It's catchy mm -hmm. and, like, yeah. also very chill. So it, I like it that. It fits the, the Rectiga great yeah. work so well so very different like Lahi would not fit in the tempest at all <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna say the orchestral version of the battle music in binding coil okay that's i, a like good I don't remember what it's called yeah i i always blank on the names i'm like the one that's playing at this time mm -hmm. <laughs> is it calamity unbound i think that's I it think actually it is. I, I think, think you're right it is yeah i think you're right yeah <laughs> ba, 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 ba. <laughs> da, 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 da. So yep. we were talking about raid groups and call outs and things like that. Yes. So it's fun to make a song to it. I think, what was it? Uh, Bahamut's Bouncy Castle mm -hmm. originally? Yeah. Bahamut's Bouncy, Bouncy Castle. Castle. That, uh, that came to be in <laughs> the third turn where you are just bouncing from platform to platform. <laughs> yep. Oh, boy. Raiding is fun, guys. Uh, so. Chicken tenders. <laughs> yeah, yep. chicken tenders. That's a good uh, one, too. And also, forward it back and forward. Oh, and back. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Uh, so based on all those ideas, not the ones that we just talked about, but yeah. the ones that they were using to make the tip. Ignore what we just said. <laughs> uh, they, began, they began to draft the visual design of the Tempest in Amarat, uh, which was temporarily called Atlantis, which is, I mean, what else are you going to call it when it's in a draft? Underwater I mean, city. Yeah, it makes sense, right? I mean, I guess they could have called it Rapture, but I mean, you know, that's, that's, Atlantis is probably better. That was the <laughs> so, Christorium, okay. <laughs> so they had uh, members of the team submit different concept art. And so they have slides for this and they're all beautiful. Like I said, we're going to get all those onto the site. Um, but initially they struggled with how best to depict that it's in a bubble, you know, like it's in this air bubble at the bottom of the sea um, because they decided not to put it in a dome. Like they could have just put it in the dome. They had domes from the Ruby Sea. Um, we've well, seen domes. Yeah, we've seen domes, but... Our, uh, they, mm -hmm. our logo was a dome, a bubble. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yes. <laughs> um, but this is an entire zone. Like, yes, even in the Ruby heart. Sea, there's, what, three or four domes, and they're small. Like, they're, yeah, exactly. they're little settlements. This is an entire area, so that dome just it just looked weird. Yeah. I'm I, glad they didn't put it in. I mean, you probably that, wouldn't you know. even really realize you were in it, unless yeah. you were at the edges. Yeah. So, the thing that they decided to do instead... Now, during the panel, it was like explained in a very short way, but I'll, I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail. So they said that they used a caustic effect on the ground. So basically what that is, is in optics, like the study of light, where let's say you have a shallow, like your uh, tub or your pool and the sun's shining into it. At the bottom of the pool, you can see these little rings of light kind of reflections from the waves on the top of it. So that's what they projected onto the ground in the tempest and it's kind of it's really subtle but it makes it look like you're at the bottom of a pool you know because it's just the light is reflect refracting in different ways um and they said that they wanted to do that because they didn't want the dome and they wanted to be kind of subtle but they still wanted to be noticeable um so that's what they were talking about with the caustic effect um which is just you know projecting this this image on the ground um but they still had the they they had water effects from Stormblood because yeah there was a lot of water there we swam for the first time, um, cool. But they still had to figure out how to overlay so many of these at once, which I thought was you know th this is where they start getting into the technical talk, which is really cool because we don't usually get this out of any developer. Um, I mean you'd have to do a GDC or something like that panel to see it, and those usually aren't super interesting. So. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite you... part uh, uh -huh. wasn't even the light effects. It's every yeah. every I don't know. They're they're probably not uh, evenly spaced out, but mm -hmm. uh, in a couple of places there are just drips of water coming down. Yeah, like they mentioned that they wanted to have it yeah. dripping as well. Um, like the bubbles there, but for how long? Yeah, some water is coming back. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> it, that's going to come back, and Mount Golg is going to fall to the ground at some point. Uh, yeah. Hopefully we'll be gone, because those yeah. could create calamities in and of themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, every time I'm in the Tempest, I'm like, man, you know, we really should have talked to them before we did this. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're having all sorts of trouble down here. <laughs> they took it They Just, took it really nicely, if you think about they it. They really did. They're like, so you screwed up our home. Could you, like, fix it? No? I guess you, know you could run I'm some errands about. for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. what, what about the Amorotines? Like, did they live underwater until we got there? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. so. Yeah, but like, I, they, they're not, like, really alive, though, right? So they probably didn't notice. Huh. I wonder, yeah, like, Emmett Some Sof, of them had to. to I guess not. He can't, he can't need to breathe because, uh, uh, who is it? Who, He's immortal. Who's yeah, who's on the moon? Someone's on, the, which, which? It's Elidibus. Not, the Lidibus is on the moon, so yeah, they don't need to breathe. That's fine. <laughs> I mean, Ray of Darkness was on the moon, too, though. Yeah, that's true. But he was already dead. That's also true. No. He Wait. had to kill himself to leave the first. Right, to leave the first. Yeah, but they weren't dead dead until they left. What I is was... dead? What is the philosophy <laughs> of death? What is dead, really? <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure Elidibus was just like, bubble, you can breathe. It's fine. Let's talk. Yeah, yeah basically. But yeah, there's, they talk about adding those bubbles and the dripping effects because they really wanted to hammer home that you're underwater. And, you know, it's kind of hard to do. It's really hard to depict 
in a in any I think game really being in an area that looks like a seafloor certainly helps i mean yeah definitely helped you know the the flora and the fauna being <laughs> the but sea you know floor. what that that zone is so realistic to me that mm -hmm. like i can sit there and kind of be like you know what if this was real it would smell really bad oh yes it would smell horribly <laughs> <laughs> under so the water bad. stink super stink <laughs> So <laughs> the next thing they talk about is that, so they had this initial idea of, uh, you know, the first part of the zone being raised and then the second part being below, like there would be a sheer cliff that you kind of descend into Amarat. Um, but they had some trouble with that as well. Uh, and they got into the technical uh, difficulty, difficulties in that. And they talked about what's called a nav mesh. So basically the best way to think about this is if you were to take your room that you're in or whatever and you put a little way mark on like every inch on the floor in a grid and so you have this grid of positions that you can be in right and basically that's how ai tra traverses areas so let's say the points under your desk aren't reachable so you say that's not a reachable point for an ai so that's how they know to not go there so that's what a nav mesh is and what it's used for. So the problem that they were encountering is if they had the difference in ground level be 1600 meters in the game. So, you know, even in game, we have measurements. It would be impossible for that nav mesh to go down that far. Like it couldn't span the distance. So because of that, they couldn't have that much of a difference. Did uh, they I say suppose. why, or is it just a limitation of the system? It's a technical limitation of the right. system that they use because basically what will happen is you'll make the zone and then you'll have an algorithm put all the points down because you, you know you can't just you're not going to place it by i blame hand. the playstation 3. yeah exactly i mean who knows yeah it, who knows exactly why i mean it could be just that it couldn't like that would make the distance between two of the points just too long like it would have to go from here to here mm. and it just couldn't do it, it brain, uh, it's just, brain can't can't process too far right so because they couldn't actually do that, they said, well, well, we'll just have to bring Amarat up to the same level or maybe a little bit below. But then they said they had so much trouble in figuring out, because as soon as you come into the Tempest, you kind of look in the distance and you'd see, oh, there's a city there. Because <laughs> so it's, still, it's still down a cliff. Yeah. But and it's, it's not, like a, a, little not a short cliff either. Yeah. I guess they just, I mean, it's similar to um, uh, the, what zone is Kalusia. that? Kalusia, Kalusia with the elevator. It's just, I guess it's just not far enough, but they That's wanted to have- That's as far as you can go. Yeah, I guess they wanted to have more uh, just so they could hide the whole city down yeah. there. Um, can you imagine having so... to fly that far? Just flying how far <laughs> it is now is kind of annoying. <laughs> that is very true. Um, but because they couldn't do that, they had to bring it up, but then they had to figure out how to hide the city behind the rest of the zone. And this is where they talk about like, Maybe we could do fog or some visual effects or, you know, something like that. They said that they had a long process, but they ended up with what we have today, which is really strangely beautiful in a way. Like, it, it, it's cool when you first get in there, you know something's past there, but you really can't tell what. And it's not, it, it doesn't really give it away unless you've been, mm -hmm. like, paying attention to your link shells and seeing people in Amarant. Uh, <laughs> but, because uh, all you see is, like, a fog with some light behind it, and it makes sense that there would be visible light from stuff beyond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The world's full of it. Mm -hmm. It's something to think about, and also another way that they've hit it, is that the very first time that you go into Kalusia, you can mm -hmm. just pull up the map, and even though you haven't unlock the entire map you haven't discovered the entire map you can still look and you can see oh there are three three excuse me <laughs> three aetherites like mm -hmm. in the map okay yeah. but when you the very first time you go into tempest you can only see the one yeah you actually can't see the one that's down there so they mm -hmm. hit that as well yeah so it, it's it's kind of like if you haven't been spoiled and you're going through it the first time they put a lot of effort into making the last cool part detail. of the tempest you know yeah. a really really big reveal and i appreciate that yeah. There's nothing here. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> this is the whole zone. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, and the A3 currents kind of also helped to op obfuscate that, too, because you're like, where is this one? Like, I remember trying to get all of them before I got to the second part, and I'm like, it should be, oh, I see. 
Is that below me? It, where is that? Is that above? Where the heck is that one? Because <laughs> I think there's one, I think, right? One just like inside the city, but right on the edge. So you might think it's close to the actual upper zone. Um, I just remember going there and being like, where is this thing? What has happened? Um, but the first so thing I did about, um, mm -hmm. when I got through to, to the Ondo Cups, the city, well, settlement of itself, uh, mm -hmm. is I was like, okay, well, there's a quest to do, but I don't care because this place is cool. So I just wandered around. Yeah. Uh, and until I, I hit the, it's like a, it was a force field that wouldn't let you yeah. go through the tunnels where you get to Amaroth the first time. And I'm mm -hmm. like, ah, this is where we're going. <laughs> I'm not allowed to go here now. Keep this in mind. Force field. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they, you know, they said that they kind of got to the effect that, that made it in the final game. But then they went into the lighting everywhere um, because that was a big focus of this expansion as well because it's permanent daytime Light. for the first time you go. Uh, so they wanted to do something different with the lighting in the Tempest um, because they wanted originally it to be brighter closer to the surface because, well, that makes sense because it's bright there. And they wanted you to descend into Amarat and it to become darker and darker until you're in the city, which is dark. And that's why all the lights in the windows are on, because they were going to have them on when it was going to be dark and they just didn't change it. So they swapped it to it was darker in the first part of the Tempest and it became kind of this nebulous disembodied light when you get into Amarat. It's just like perfectly lit for some reason. You don't can't really tell why um, because they wanted it to be more fantastical and majestic, um, which I think was a, a really interesting like view into the development process of, yeah, we'll just do it like that. Wait a second. But that doesn't really give us the effect we want when you get into Amarat. Visually. Um, yeah, visually. Um, so it's just, you know, once again, I mean, it's kind of a big change because it's the whole lighting, but it, it's just this attention to detail, you know, that's, I just love hearing about it. <laughs> did you guys notice that Amarat was lit in a weird way? Or did I mean, like, kind of. It, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's like, not I didn't a notice. whole lot brighter than mm -hmm. the area the above, in my opinion. But it is mm -hmm. odd that it is lit in a semi, like, alive way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I didn't even notice it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a difference between the... You know the the buildings that you see kind of you know when yashtola tells you hey go check out these mm -hmm. buildings and take this knife and try to cut it up and then let's yeah. let's look you know there's a difference between those and the ones that you see obviously in Amarat. okay it's clear mm -hmm. that this city it's it's alive there yeah. are people that are there mm -hmm. i mean there was a you know a, a 20 story starbucks that's going on you know <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. busy um so but it gives you this oh wow it's just a nice yeah nice it's night. like it's yeah, it, and you said alive. Yeah, it's it's this kind of alive, but lighting. but not real somehow too. Yeah, because it, it's like it, this. It doesn't mm -hmm. look fake, but it looks fake. It looks like idealized, a, you know. Yes, like it's a very well constructed mm -hmm. fake piece. <laughs> <laughs> it's real enough to where we could get some apartments there. You hear that, Essie? <laughs> <laughs> Amarotine housing with I wouldn't want to live there. You'd lose your stuff every time the simulation gets to the end. <laughs> That's fine. But they could make it work. <laughs> they could, could be like, make this book. And then someone will figure out how it's supposed to work. And yeah. you know, it's it's funny to me because yeah, that would that would ease the pain of summoner, so please do it. <laughs> I <laughs> I want the, the Ishgard housing, but you know, also yeah, those would be cool too. <laughs> yeah. Both yeah, uh, would, you notice. Mm -hmm. uh, we asked this question in our interview, and they, they mm -hmm. were kind of like, wait for the panel, and they didn't answer it here either. Uh, are there pieces mm. of Amarat on all of the shards, all of the reflections? Ah. Hmm. I want to know that. They probably are like, we don't, we don't know. Probably. <laughs> the yeah. answer was probably, I don't know, maybe later. Uh. Yeah. I wonder, um, because why did he choose the first to make this? When did he make it? You know, like how long has it been there? Was it just ruins of, you know, because there's other ruins. So is this really where they were? I don't know. You know, it's it's such cool questions out of it. And, you know, I, I am not 
like I love the lore, but I haven't done a deep dive into it to know. So I don't know if those answers are out there. Here's my you theory. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so I think that theoretically, as this is mm -hmm. a theory, uh, there would be a piece, uh, some sort of section of Amrat on all of the reflections. Uh, maybe on sense. the first is where it was best preserved, where he got the the best view of it to try and rebuild. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe uh, it's where there are so many. There's so many things that could happen. Maybe there are beastmen living in the ruins of all of the other ones. Maybe uh, this is the only one that was kind of open, and he could just be like, "Plop, here's my town." Yeah, it was the safest just, place. Any number yeah. of ideas. Yeah, because you know, no one's gonna discover it. That's we a good point too. It, in it, the it chat. was destroyed with that um, with that calamity that they yeah. had to fix with. Zodiac yeah. and subsequently Heidelin. So, yeah. um, you know, we saw the ruins. So assuming, you know, that there aren't any other calamities that would just destroy the ground and mm -hmm. the whole architecture mm -hmm. of everything, uh, they would still be there. But I mean, yeah. I think you told us it was pretty clear that on the source, we're never yeah. going to find them because there's just been so many calamities. That's true. You're right. So, I forgot about the land that. is different. Uh, in yeah, the chat, it, it, someone it said, uh, I think he wanted to show it specifically to the way you like to, to gain that sympathy. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Or and maybe to help us remember, yes, that we once lived. Yeah. <laughs> We're only a little sliver of ourselves. Oh, this expansion was so good. <laughs> like all just the talking about hints, it makes uh, it just, yeah. uh, oh. so good. <laughs> uh, so then they started to talk about the design of the actual cityscape of Amarat. So once they placed the ancients in the city at the size that they are, they kind of proved out, okay, so this is the size of the ancients. Let's make, you know, this counter this big. Let's make, you know, the trees this big. Um, and they specifically called out uh, the bench that we sit on um, yeah. with Hyphlodeus when he's talking to us. Uh, Ishikawa said, I really wanted someone to sit on that bench. I really wanted the scene to happen. I really wanted to see you interacting with their too large furniture which is awesome. That's really cool um, that she just wanted it to happen. And so they worked it in in a very interesting, you know, like way. Um, they also said that the developers, specifically some of the art team members that were working on the cityscape, were also playing Spider-Man on PS4 during the time. And they took some inspiration from that, you know, just kind of how a city is, is put together and kind of the visual elements, which is just, that's awesome to hear, you know, them, Going out and games inspiring from... games. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but can we flip around Amarat, please? <laughs> Amaro team who gives you a side quest is just going to be flying around on a web. <laughs> I mean, if they think it, they can achieve it. So yeah. <laughs> Halloween mount this year, please. <laughs> An ancient just web slinging. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a four per well, it's at very least a two person mount because you can sit on the two shoulders. And then... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so that's weird. Don't they... do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I mean, it's better than being like under the robe. I want to be the th the thwipper though. I don't want to be sitting on some ancient shoulder. <laughs> uh, so after they talked about kind of the cityscape, uh, they went into the next portion of it. And that's of the panel of how they went about getting and uh, you know ordering and designing new assets. So all the props and characters and animations. And this section was a little bit smaller, and it seems like they had a little bit more translation issues with this one. Just just it kind of went back back to back to back to back, and it was a little bit smaller. But the first scene that they showed that they wanted to highlight was the scene with Menphilia and Menphilia, uh, kind of when they're talking to each other right before, I believe that's right before the transfer of Menphilia into Menphilia and her becoming written, I believe. Um, yeah. I, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. I was just making sure because I'm like, I think that's what that is. So they just wanted to really highlight the lighting of that scene because of course it was at a difficult area with two people in white <laughs> with a giant orange background. So they had a lot of trouble just getting the lighting right for the scene itself. Uh, and they just, they called it out. They didn't really talk about why or how, but they just said, hey, we spent a lot of time on this lighting because it was it was difficult. Um, 
like I didn't hear any more of that. I think that's all they said. I, I know that you had seen it that you had seen it a couple of times, Bill. Did you hear anything else? Well, the, I think the sense that I got from it was mm -hmm. this is a, a really pivotal point in the story. Yeah. And I think for the development of Reen herself, because prior yeah. to that, she was just like, I don't know if I can do this. Right. I don't know. I'm just a big failure. And mm -hmm. then she owns up <clears throat> to this, this, this story that she can make her own. She could take this destiny and make it her own. And, and, and that changes her. So, uh, you know, she gets the transformation of, of mm -hmm. the hair um, you know, even her eyes. And so I think yeah. part of seeing that with the background uh, was really important. And, and yeah, I can understand. Yeah, they're all dressed in white. Um, you know, you don't want to just be this big blur where everyone yeah. needs to be wearing their, their sunglasses. Yeah, um, so, I, so I get that. It's, it's nice that they put the time in there mm -hmm. to help us see this, uh, this character progression of someone uh, who is going to be really important to us, you know, moving forward. Yeah, for who knows how long. <laughs> they wanted to be nice during that scene because we were ha either already we're at or we're going to Mount Golg and we're going to be blind there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That I like that reason too. <laughs> so next they talked about Fail Ol, or as uh, Suzuki -san called her, Fail Chan, which I thought was amazing. Like just hearing him say Fail Chan. Uh, but <laughs> apparently, huh? <laughs> just a noise. I don't like oh, yeah. that character. <laughs> a lot of people do. <laughs> I'm eh, ambivalent. She's all right. That that voice actress. I don't know. It just it just rubs me the wrong way. But ah, okay. I don't you know. mind the voice. I just don't like the the personality. Hmm. Mm. I mean, you know, a lot of people like her. Maybe the voice is supposed to rub you the wrong way. She the Jar Jar Binks of Black <laughs> A lot. You know, a lot of people like the, her. The, apparently, the yeah. Some people. Uh, hey. Yeah. To each his own. But you know what? Yeah. She brings me back stuff. When I sell it on my retainers, and you know what? That's cool. That's good. That's you know, good. It makes me money. <laughs> yeah. You are useful. So apparently her her model needed a lot of adjustments and the skeleton underneath because by that time they had already made all the pixies that they were going to make. And so they were making Fail Ol, and they're like, oh, well, she's got to be different. She's got to have the pigtails, which is part technically part of the skeleton because they articulate. So they were they had to tweak it quite a bit. Um, they also said that they had to pay special attention to her facial details because the other pixies were a lot less expressive and they needed her to be over the top. Um, but uh, <laughs> the next part, uh, they just showed a, a slide with like, you know, uh, Yustola holding some meal, some uh, astrologian cards looked like. And then on the right side, it was the plus size Makote as they, they, they say. Uh, in Lalafell and undergarments, kind of walking la la like a Lalafell, like straight legged. And so the, the crowd is laughing and they're saying that, yeah, so what happened there was they were testing for a a chubby Mikote child. And so it, in the testing for that, they were like, wait, what if we made her? Wow, this is kind of cool. You know what? Maybe we should have those. And Ishikawa said, I want them. I want them now, and I want them put in the opening animation, <laughs> which was so cool. Like, I, you know, things come from little tests, little one-off things that come in, that get into a game, and people will never know. That's not. And a people little love test. it that's too. A chubby <laughs> test. Yeah, that's a chubby test. Yeah, and people love them. I mean, like, I didn't think I was gonna like, um, what is her name? Uh, Alphino's uh, patron. I forget her name. Chubby Makote. Yeah, Chubby Makote lady. That's her name. Mrs. Chai. <laughs> Chai yeah. Mrs. Chai, that's right. Um, so like the I thought I was going to hate her, but she's such a nice... Julia. Julia yeah. Chai. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, she she ended up being a an interesting character to see what life is like inside of that city. You know, she's an in, interesting kind of, not quite a viewpoint character, but she adds to it. I, I think you need that because your only other impression of Yulmore is mm -hmm. Wall 3, which is like someone yeah. who you don't like, and you don't want to associate Yulmar with just, oh, I hate everybody that's there. Yeah. So you got to put in someone that is a really, really lovable character that you can kind of attach to. So, mm -hmm. and and they they gave her a lot of screen time throughout the entire yeah. MSQ. So a lot more than I thought good. she would get. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's cool that they could rehabilitate the image of the rest of the people in the city. Um, because yeah, first time through, you're like, oh my God, these people are all garbage. Like why, <laughs> why? Why do I even want to save this place? <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think you also get a uh, sort of little tiny tangent. You also get the impression mm-hmm. of uh, from the people outside your and mm-hmm. uh, the singing singer uh, oh, that, yes. that they're yeah. just obviously misled, don't know any better, mm-hmm. very clearly confused and just manipulated. This yeah. is this is all they know. This is so. This is what they think is right, and they just don't. They don't have a concept of of reality. Yeah, that that kind of. I don't know, that kind of nuanced layering is just that they did that so much in Shadowbringers and it is great. I mean, I keep saying Shadowbringers is great, but it is. <laughs> we know. <laughs> um, so that was the end of that section, which, I mean, it was probably because of time. Uh, I would love to see more of this sort of thing. Um, but they go into the next section was talking about cutscenes. Um, and they go into a lot of detail, you know, kind of technical details about that. So they mentioned at the beginning that cutscenes are not really the specialty of 14 and MMOs. Really, they're they're not they're not going to do the wow ones. You know, they're not going to do it that way. Uh, they're going to be kind of in game, and because of that, there's limitations. Um, but they wanted to show off some of the tricks that they learned and and had to use. So the first one uh, was talking about the way that text auto advances in cutscenes. So normally you have a cutscene, you have to press a button, you know, or click to go to the next text box. And so that sometimes creates limitations where it's like, you know, someone expresses and they're stuck there. Then you have to press the button and then someone responds, you know, it's not a great flow. Um, But then they said, okay, well, we can use a timer and it'll just auto advance and you'll have some time to read and you'll see it. But then, since the game is in so many different languages, it's hard to get the timing right. Because how long does it take you to read that in Japanese or English or German or, you know, all of these different languages? Um, So that was a problem that they had, which is something that I never even thought about. Like, never even paid any attention to. Like, we all see the cutscenes, and we're all like, oh, it's kind of funny that I have to press a button to go to the next one. But that's really a problem with with storytelling and cutscenes. And I don't know. I didn't think about it. Did you guys even catch that no. before this? No? I'm one of those people that very quickly reads. And mm-hmm. if yeah. if this stuff is going on still, maybe I'll stop. But otherwise, I'm like, button. Mm-hmm. I finished reading next. <laughs> yeah, there are some cutscenes that you have to advance. Yeah. And if you, like, walk away to go get something to drink or yeah. go to the restroom and you come back, um, it's like the music will just kind of keep repeating. And yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's a little... It's a little different. Like it's not meant yeah. to be sitting there for 15, 20 minutes. So yeah. the fact that they have these new cutscenes that are auto advancing, uh, they're a lot smoother. Mm-hmm. Uh, they tell a story a little quicker. They can maintain the the tempo and the right. speed with it, uh, and it's good. It makes for better storytelling. Right. And you know they say that you know that that that's all the benefits that they identified. They were like, this is what we want to do, but we have to be really careful because we don't want to overwhelm you with text. Um, but it will improve, you know, like camera cuts and and animations. So they were saying that an example of this is the, they called them the gentleman that you meet at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, The, the, you know, the man who's reminiscent to the caravan uh, leader guy, I do believe, I forget his name. Then again. Yeah, (laughs) then again, there you go, thank you. (laughs) Um, But they said that- You're a fan of again? (laughs) Yeah. but they said that uh, in that cutscene, they were able to do mostly auto advanced text, which I honestly noticed the first time because I, you know, we get there and it's starting to move, and I'm like, oh, oh, this is like okay, so it's going okay. I'll just watch it then. Um, but because of that, it allowed them to make him more expressive because he just kind of flows better, um, which I mean, I didn't notice because I wasn't paying attention to the guy, uh, and he kind of went away. <laughs> <laughs> went away. Yeah. Permanently. Yeah, he gone. Uh, And they also did the entire ending scene in the same way, which, frankly, I don't know. I don't know if I could see at that point in time just because of the tears (laughs) in my eyes. So (laughs) I'm not sure. Did you guys notice like the change? There was more. Imagine like how less impactful that final scene would have been if you had to click through it. Yeah, you know, that's true. But I think I think what it's interesting is that when they have auto advancing cutscenes, if they're mm-hmm. done well enough, we're never even going to notice it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. We're never going to notice it. So <laughs> that's good. It's you know, 
it's so cool and it's it's not you know like a, a, it, the next part is more of the tricks that they use but this is something that they're evolving over time you know their storytelling which is great uh you know it's just getting better and better so the next part uh they had a little content warning uh, suzuki-san said okay this next part might be a little disturbing and i think at that point everyone's like i think i know what they're going to talk about so they're talking about Teslin's transformation into a sin eater uh and that scene i was anyone prepared for that no i was not prepared for that uh, i did not uh. think that that was going to happen <laughs> I didn't feel like there's a precedent for that in the yeah. game so far. It, it, it brought her to tears. It brought me to tears. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fluids. Uh, so, <laughs> so they said that they wanted to show all of the horror of this transformation. And they did. Right <laughs> yeah, I think it worked. Um, of course, they had to stay within limits due to ratings, right? Of course, they have to. But they talk specifically about part of the scene where she does start to leak fluid out of the eyes and, and mouth and kind of change into the Sin Eater. Um, so they wanted to show it, but they didn't really know how they were going to do it. They had made tears before, they said, and the, the method that they got to, which is a very smart method, I mean, it's really cool in that they basically made a layered mask of each portion of the fluids that would come out. And they put that model inside of her face and slowly pushed it out. So it would be the first things that you see as it came out. So when the first part came out, it would be right under her eyes. Then, the, then it pushed out more and it would be under like her cheek and it would continue to progress. They actually had a, a, a slide of each, you know, a, a, a frame of each part of it. So, and then they showed the model that was the mask that was the fluids and it was just it was like, oh man, you know what? I didn't, I didn't notice how it was done because I was just too horrified at the time, just like what is happening. But yeah, that's a great idea to not have to make an animation, to just use a model. You can display models and push it through the other model because it's a, it's a video game, you know. Um, that was just so clever to me. They also, <laughs> and I, I hope that anyone listening to or watching this will go and watch this part of the panel. Because they had this little example where <laughs> Suzuki-san had a, he's like, I brought a prop. And he brings out a Namazu mask. I wish I had one, but I don't. Um, and he's like, this is how he did it. So he just kind of looks in profile to the camera and pushes it past his face <laughs> with this hilarious look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, ta-da. <laughs> it's, it's just really funny. Um, but uh, so what did you think about that? I know that you have, you had watched that part, Bill. Well, I, what's, I guess a couple of things. Yeah. Um, what's, what's, what's interesting to me is that they're not saying, oh, we're limited by the technology we have in the engine. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get, okay, it's a little, it's a little dated, but they're not mm -hmm. using that as an excuse. They're trying to find innovative ways um, without having to create these massive, costly, uh, mm -hmm. time-consuming cutscenes yeah. in order to give us the visual effect. And, and I don't know about you, but, you know, between that scene and... You know our our little guy Ben again, mm -hmm. and the one in Calusia where that guy had to like cut off his skin and, and yeah, and you know that set the tone as like oh wow this is really dark wow this got dark really quick <laughs> yes and it was really really good at the beginning part of the MSQ to tell us oh it's not just going to be oh things are really really nice and cute and you know honky dory um, mm -hmm. it was really I, I appreciated that and again what that tells me is that you know what they're they're working hard. To, to do the best that they can. They're trying to be innovative. They're trying to try new things mm -hmm. and uh, and it's working and it's really good. Yeah. So I'm, it, it makes me excited about the future. Like what else are they going to do? What else can I look forward to? Yeah. Um, like the best is still yet to be seen. Right. You know, more body horror coming. Please look forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah. How did you react to that? Was me? That, yeah, like, cause you know, we weren't playing together when we played through yeah. it. Yeah, uh, I mean, the. Honestly, everything else, I was kind of like, oh, okay, you know what, skin, he's kind of off camera, whatever, yeah. not a big deal. And then they, they actually showed this, like, horrified face, and then, like, the, and I'm just like. Oh, <laughs> man, it's happening. It's, yeah. it's one of those slowly, like, oh, my gosh, they're actually. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going to see yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I, like, I don't want to say I enjoyed it, but it was, 
it was good. It was, it was, yeah. it did what it was supposed to do. It made me feel uncomfortable and understand right. the gravity of, and the pain and horror of what it yeah. was to become uh, one of these. Think about. Yeah, one of these forgiven and and why these people go to this this uh, last home place because that's what's going to happen to all of them and they want to be offed. Yeah, it's just Ugh. thinking about. The, I hate that little kid, by the way. Screw that oh. little kid. Yeah, yeah, he's not, no. Like, That's fine. Give him his nectarine. No. It's okay. No nectarine <laughs> for you. You can have a cliff wow. side. Like. Wow. <laughs> I feel bad for people that are cutscene skippers that just missed oh, yeah. out on that. Yeah. yeah. You know, That's just they, ridiculous. They show up to the first the first dungeon and the second boss and they're like, oh, just another person to fight. Whatever. And everyone else is like, no, <gasps> it's no. Not. Oh man. The, and you like I said, missing I out if you're a cutscene skipper. Shame on yeah. you. I did the whole thing with trust and I brought Alice and just her, she's like, no, is mm -hmm. it, you know, like it can't be, I think is what she says. And it's like, oh no, what have I done? I should have left you on the sidelines. <laughs> Why did I do this to you? <laughs> We, uh, but, we had a friend mm -hmm. who was like, oh, Tessaline, really cute. I like this character. Yeah. Like, new waifu. Ha, ha, ha. And we were like, yeah, new waifu. Get to really yeah. know that character. You'll like them. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Everything's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, he so, didn't yeah, know. That... So we were just screwing with him. He was like, no, there's like... It's fine. She's great. It's she's fine. fine. She's great. Don't she's worry good. About it. She's just a great, you know, she's going to be with you for a long time. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they identified this as like, yes, we know it's kind of a, a low tech way to, to do this, but it worked. It, it doesn't worked. look it low really, tech. It doesn't at all. It looks like. No, it looks really good. <laughs> um, and they said at the end of this section that there are other tricks that they do this, you know, in uh, other areas where they, where they have tricks and they would love to show it. Uh, and talk more about it in the future. And I want that panel. Please do it. I want more of that. Because I know there's so many little things that we'd be like, what? That's how you did that? Um, so hopefully they do. Uh, so then they ended the panel. So this is the beginning of the, the end of the panel with uh, saying that they only showed a small portion of the whole process. But you can imagine that this process continued for every asset every single you know uh area all of the cutscenes, that sort of stuff just repeated and the sheer volume of work was just trying because it's two years to do the whole expansion that we've gone through and some of the stuff we haven't you know there's a lot of stuff that they were working on still during that two years up until the release that we haven't even seen yet so yeah i get it um however they made it through to the first full playthrough of the main story quest content. So they, they got to the, like, we can show it off to someone. So they showed it to Yoshi P. And they had a little slide saying, what did he say? And so he played through. And when he finally said something, he said, and I quote, I was, I was crying toward the end there constantly. <laughs> and, you know, the, the audience laughs. And, you know, the Ishikawa and, and uh, uh, Suzuki-san were both like, yes, we did it. And they had this mm -hmm. cute little slide with a bunch of giant beavers saying, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, but not so fast. Because immediately afterwards, he said, yeah, I want to tweak this and this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> Nobody's surprised at that, though. No, yeah. not at all. <laughs> that's, that's his job. That's what he does. Yeah, that's exactly what he does. Yeah. And, you know, I, I love that they have this sense of humor about it. You know, it's kind of like that gallows humor and in, 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 you know, in fields where you're pushed. Well, they've been there a while, right? They yeah, know that yeah. that's the first thing that you turn out is never going to be your final product nope. ever. And if yeah, it is, no. like, something's wrong with you, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, like, nobody is that good. Nobody. Yeah. Maybe yeah. soaking. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear some of the first drafts of songs, man. That would be I mean, cool. we got a, kind of an example of that, right? With the, uh, the Shadowbringers main theme in the Oh, the yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. We got yeah. three versions of that mm -hmm. as, as they uh, went from FanFest to FanFest. And to be honest with you, I like the first one the best. Mm. Well, in the last version, when they start playing Eternal Wind from Final Fantasy III, I just, I, it just hits me. Like, I love that song. <laughs> like, I never played three, so. Uh, it's just the song. Like, oh, man, it's such a good song. But uh, so after, you know, they said, yeah, and then we had to tweak some stuff. Um, they mentioned that 
they were working on some things up to the very end. They they said this word that uh, uh, they they called it a deadlock, uh, and that's just basically, yeah, it's just basically a backlog. Things that we need to do, things that we want to tweak, things that are still on our list to do before the dead date or the delivery date. Mm. So that's that's what that was. So they were like, we had to go through all this stuff. They mentioned, uh, you know, there was a there was a particular cutscene that they that the warrior of light squints during and they were like it doesn't look right we got to redo it and they kept doing it all the way up to release like no it still doesn't look right yeah so it's it's like all the races too yeah exactly specifically mentioned that and i never thought about that that they have to do it for every race yeah every gender yeah and every time we keep asking for a new race it's just like more work for them so yeah Uh. it just (laughs) and so much work that they had to do but in the end they they shared this sense of relief in how much everyone seemed to enjoy it. Like, you know, seeing the reaction, seeing seeing players just interact with the content and love it. They're like, you know, that's exactly what it's what it's all for. You know, like we did it all and we made it through it and it, it sucked at times, but we made something we're proud of. And, you know, you guys seem to enjoy it and we're going to keep doing it, you know, like that, which is such a great message at the end, you know, like, they want to be doing this. Like, it's not just, it's it's passion, you know, which is hard to have, <laughs> especially when you're doing the type of hours that I know that they were probably working. Yes. Um, to get stuff done in a month like that? Uh-huh. Mm. What is, yeah. like, roll out <laughs> the futons, we're sleeping at work, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> There's a reason why there are nap pods at Google and things like that, <laughs> and the industry has a lot of crunch. Um, so... It, it's nice to see the passion is still there, yeah. um, even after the the grueling bit that they've gone through. Um, so they ended it, you know, thanking everyone, you know, thanking the audience, thanking the players, and they had this little gif of Emmett Selk walking towards <laughs> Kalusia, you know, from I, I think it's from the um, the lift, like it's at the at the, the opening of the lift, yeah, at the ladder, and he's just like ah whatever, and it says thank you at the bottom, and I just it was just so, I don't know. It was a great end to the panel, I think. <laughs> I want that emote in the game. Yeah, his little... <laughs> uh, oh, we should. That would be great. Slash Emmett, ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, I see. Please. <laughs> please. Please. <laughs> I will pay for it. You can yeah, put it on the whatever, station. I'll pay for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, they, they did uh, plug the soundtrack, which we've talked about before in news uh, at the end of the panel, you know, like, hey, it's coming out, please purchase it. Uh, we've talked about it, it's up on the site, so I'm not gonna go into it, but that was the end of the panel. And and frankly, it was awesome. It was really good. Um, that level of insight to the process is not unprecedented, but it's it's harder to get from a, a, a Japanese developer. It's also of- hard to make <laughs> interesting at times. Yes, definitely. Like, you can explain as much as you want, but people may not mm-hmm. be interested in, in what you're explaining. <clears throat> yeah. Well, something to note is that what they've typically done in FanFest is that they've kept the Japanese-speaking devs mm-hmm. over, like, in the Japan FanFest only. Yeah. But they're starting to slowly, you know, they brought Oda-san over, okay, because mm-hmm. people like that. And they're like, oh, we got a good response to that. Because yeah. otherwise it's just been, you know, like, Koji Fox and people that you know that, that can't speak English, but they're bringing mm-hmm. more of them over there, and people are responding really well to that. So yes. I hope they keep doing that. Um, yeah, you know. And, oh, people and will sit here while we translate anyway. things. Yeah, you yeah. know, like we want to hear it. We definitely want to hear it. Yeah, and I'm glad that they are, you know, taking taking the chances to do it. So I don't know. I, it was, you know, it, to be to be honest, I didn't watch it until I I had to watch it. You know, because I was going to to do this uh, kind of the write up and we're going to talk about it because I've just been busy. But like after watching it, I'm like, man, that was if it, every panel that they do, that's a development panel. I'm going to watch from now on. Yeah, it just it makes me so want much. to watch these panels right. as soon as they come out. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, you know, that's great. Like if you can make that sort of technical detail and that sort of stuff entertaining to your player base, I, I mean, just having that be entertaining to your player base is, indicative of a great game you know like i wouldn't want to really listen to that for some games you know like they're okay that's that's fine i don't really care and they wouldn't be able to make it interesting or entertaining and they've just shown a a great sense of humor and this i don't know the style that i really enjoy 
but yeah, that's is. true. Like oh. all of all of the devs that that we've seen so far that mm-hmm. I can think of that that I personally watched. Maybe there are a couple I didn't watch, but they mm-hmm. they all have like a very gung ho and excited personality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like it's really it's very refreshing to see. Right. Yeah. To know that, that all tell... these people are that excited. Mm-hmm. You yeah. can tell they're they're humble, but they're also very hardworking, and they yeah. appreciate the feedback. I think that's something yeah. that this that's one of the reasons why I like this game is that they value the feedback. They'll listen to it. If they make mistakes, they'll apologize. They'll make those changes, uh, but they want it. And um, you know, these are you know, I like these devs. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was. You know what the they say? The like, if you enjoy your work, it's not really work. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's true. To a point, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but hell, uh, when you're making Final Fantasy fourteen, I am I'd be happy. <laughs> All right. So uh, that that was the panel. Mm-hmm. Thank you for joining us as we went over it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's really all we have for you guys today. So uh, we're going to have Bill plug his info so you can go and check him out. Mm-hmm. You ready? Oh, boy. I got to <laughs> yeah. memorize. How do I spell? How to read English? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so if anybody wants to check me out, uh, obviously you've been able to see uh, my Twitter info, unless you're mm-hmm. listening on iTunes. And then it's uh, at Bill Murray FFXIV. Mm-hmm. Um, or uh, I also um, stream a little bit every night on uh, Twitch, which is uh, uh, twitch.tv slash BillMurray14. Mm. So, okay. That is all. And uh, I can tell you that they're entertaining because uh, I watched, I think it was uh, Titan Clear. Like the clear oh, wow. of the Titan Clear. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh man, he's Clear Titan. That's cool. Because we, we just started working on it. We're much more of a casual group. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I always love seeing those moments. And it was just, I don't know. The, it was entertaining. The, the nerd scream, clear face. Oh, the nerd scream. Oh, yeah, you got to have the nerds. They're, they're authentic. They're genuine. That's, right. that's, you know, that's how we all feel. And <laughs> it was actually, it was actually pretty funny because uh, we, we were looking at the video and then we got into Titan probably yeah. that night or maybe yeah, the night. next day mm-hmm. uh, for the first time. And I'm like, I know what this mechanic is. I've seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> So thanks for the help, man. Yeah. Hey, glad, <laughs> they're fun glad videos. I can help somehow. Yeah. <laughs> they're fun videos. Go so. check them out. And right. Uh, and that'll do it for us. So here's our outro. If you want, <laughs> you can email us at aetheriteradio at gamerscape.com. Tweet at us at Aetherite Radio. And find us on Twitter. Well, that is Twitter, isn't it? Uh, Facebook and Discord <laughs> at Gamerscape. <laughs> Uh, well, it's different because you can find us at Aether Right Radio or Gamerscape on Twitter. There's two of them. There's two of them. Uh, yeah. So thanks for hanging out. Thank you very much, Bill, for being a guest with us today. Thanks so much. It was yes, so much sir. fun. Thanks for having and, me. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.